Hi everyone. Uh, so I had a request for a video um, f about traveling with your birds. Now this is something that I don't do a lot of personally. Uh, I have in the last couple of years just because I moved away to college and then I moved back. I actually moved apartments while I was away. So I, I, I don't want to say I'm a pro but I've kind of been through it a couple times and it's definitely not something that kind of, like, you, a lot of people think, just throw your bird in a cage and it'll be fine kind of thing. But depending on how far you're going or how you're traveling, there can be so many other things that goes along with this. So the first thing I always tell people when they travel with their birds is that you do not want your bird loose in your vehicle. Um, this can kind of go two different ways. Um, I don't recommend that your bird is not in a carrier. And if your bird does not travel well in a carrier, I don't recommend that your bird is not anchored down in some fashion. So I'll start with the what I recommend the first and foremost is that you buy a travel vessel of some sort or another. There are so many different kinds out there. It really just depends on what your bird likes in particular. Um, my little birds have little, like they're tiny travel cages. Um, very, it makes me so sad to see this, but a lot of these travel cages um, are sold as small bird cages. So a lot of the times if you go into um, some pet stores that don't really know their stuff about birds, they will um, have little finches in these tiny little cages. And honestly, they're only about this big and it's absolutely awful to see because these were only meant to transport your bird to the vet, in the car, um, if you're going somewhere, if you're moving, that kind of thing. So essentially, um, with a travel cage, you're not going to want to buy anything that's overly huge. Um, really, all you're going to want it to, to have in there is a very secure perch, um, something a little smaller maybe than you would normally use so that they can, the birds can get a good grip on it, um, and enough room for food and water. You don't want to put any toys, you don't want to put any... Um, extra stuff in there um, just in case you do a sharp turn and the, the toy is swinging around like crazy I just I just don't recommend anything like that that can be um, hung from the top now if you have a bigger bird obviously a little cage like I'm describing is really not going to work um, my go-to is actually dog carriers now you can get the plastic ones the hard shell ones which um, depending on your bird might be the better option um, if you can't actually, with a wire one, you can't really, like, it's hard to hold on to these without your birds trying to, you know, eat your fingers. Um, so this kind of goes two ways. If you're doing a lot of moving from one vehicle to the next, or it's a short trip, then I recommend something like that. Now you can MacGyver these, um, just by really, um, drilling holes on either side and inserting a perch so that your bird's not on the plastic bottom because that's really uncomfortable for a lot of birds to be sliding around. And you can also get um, feeders that hook onto the doors, the metal bars of the doors. So if your bird is not comfortable with fingers or really doesn't like to travel and might become um, nervous and try to bite you if they're in a wire cage, then definitely go for a hard shell cage. If they are comfortable with traveling, or are going to be spending an extended period of time in the car, or you know your bird's going to be fairly comfortable if you're trying to get the bird in and out of this, um, then what I also recommend is a small wire dog cage. Now, that's what we travel with Goonie, um, because I can leave it in the car, I can take Goonie from the house, put him into the carrier once we're in the car, and he can stay there the entire time. Um, and that's kind of where the difference falls. If you can't get your bird anywhere near the car, then putting your bird in a carrier, then carrying the carrier out to the car is probably a better idea. Whereas, if you have a bird who is comfortable with the car and doesn't mind being transported into the kennel once you get there, that's probably the better idea. Now with Goonie, I found that a hard shell carrier he really does not like. Um, I don't know if he feels claustrophobic or he can't see anything or there's not enough to hold on to, but he really doesn't like those. Um, so we stick to a wire kennel. Um, I usually put a few toys in the bottom and I put 
the perch is fairly close to the bottom so we can walk around and then of course he's got his food and water. Now I know a lot of people will say not to put food and water in a travel cage if you're traveling and to me this is a fine line. If you're traveling for 20 minutes down the road, um, like sometimes I'll go into Kirkland with one of my birds which is a small town very close to where I live. Um, I don't mind not providing food and water because once we get there, um, they usually have a setup where they can get get a drink of water, and it's, they're not spending an extended period of time in a car. Anything over an hour, I definitely recommend putting food and water in the cage, um, simply because their metabolisms are so much faster than ours. Um, as a vet tech, we are told over and over again, you do not feed or you do not fast any small animals. Um, so any animal that uh, like lives in a cage, like uh, hamsters, gerbils, rabbits, guinea pigs, birds, you do not fast them because their metabolisms are just way too fast and you can cause a lot of damage by doing that. So always provide food and water. Now, there are a couple tricks to traveling with water. I know water is kind of one of those scary things because it tends to splash all over the place. If you can train your bird to use a sipper bottle, and you can get fairly large ones, I've actually had um, found one that was meant for small dogs and cats that I trained Goonie to use, um, which is actually fairly simple. All I did was put a little peanut butter around the edge, and he figured out that if he touched the bubble with his tongue, water would come out. Um, and that way it's not splashing all over the place and they can get water without ha you having to worry about it sloshing all over the place within 10 minutes and you not being able to fill it up again or them not having access to water. Um, definitely provide different treats if you're in the car and your bird is, you know, fairly comfortable. Um, things that are juicy like apples and oranges are great because then they get the moisture and they get the food kind of at the same time. Um, if your bird is not the kind of bird who travels well in a carrier or they travel really, really, really well and you want to have them out while you're in the car, um, definitely, definitely, definitely have some way of tying your bird to yourself or to the seat in some fashion. Um, now my go-to is always the aviator flight harness. Uh, when you're outside, but I find that in the car, because of that bungee cord, um, and some birds like to chew on it, it's really not a good idea. Um, personally, I prefer um, either the um, feather tether, which can be a little cumbersome to get on smaller birds. If you have a smaller bird, then like I would probably recommend you stick with the, the aviator, because it's a lot easier to get on and it's a lot less bulky. Or go with a flight suit which definitely doubles as um, a uh, like a harness so you can anchor it to you um, and it, it also triples I guess <laughs> well I guess no that would be the first use would be as a birdie diaper so your bird can't poop all over you and it can't poop all over the seat um, so your bird can come out and kind of enjoy being in the car without you having to worry about being pooped on before you get there or on the seats and then you're trying to um, wipe the seats down or fix your clothing or whatever. Um, so definitely find some way of keeping your bird connected to you because that's the last thing you want to do is have the window open or you open the door or something happens and your bird takes off and it's not connected to you. Now the reason why I always recommend that you travel with your bird in a carrier first, uh, especially a hard shell carrier, um, although Goonie does also have a soft-sided carrier um, is because if something ever were to ever happen, heaven forbid, you get into a car accident. Um, if your bird is in a hard shell case, chances are it's going to survive a lot better than if it were in either a soft-sided carrier or if it was on your shoulder. Um, definitely worst case scenario, but something that you might want to consider if you're going to be traveling for quite a distance. Um, car crashes are scary and I would hate for something to happen um, because you didn't have your bird in a safe place um, anchored into the car. So those are my tips for traveling with your bird. Um, there are some other things that you might want to keep in mind like some birds don't like the radio, some birds don't like the windows to be open, definitely don't smoke in the car if your bird's in there. Um, so really those are the nuts and bolts. If you have any other questions about traveling with your birds, maybe how to um, acclimatize your bird to traveling or um, some other options if your bird really, really, really doesn't like to travel, um, 
post them in the comments below and I'll try to make a video about them. Um, like I said, I've traveled a few times and I've had to kind of troubleshoot some of my birds. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you have a good day. Uh, it's Easter weekend. Have a good time with your birds. See you next time.